hunger, feed him. The enemy is anyone who is not born again. That's the enemy. It's not talking about someone who's who wants to kill you or something. It's just talking about someone who's who's not us, who's not a born again Christian. But we're supposed to be feeding them. We're supposed to be feeding the poor, not the government. The Lord has has given Christians a uh, lots of money. I mean, you you got all kind of money going into these churches. And if there was if they were using this money correctly, the tithe money, then we could be reaching a lot of people, a lot of people. Building these nice churches does not reach people. Building a gym, uh, bowling alley. I know churches that have bowling alleys. I'm sorry, this does not reach people. It might reach pe young people to go in there and play bowl games, or but what's going to reach people for the Lord and make a change in their life is feeding them and showing them the love of God. That's what we need to be doing, is feeding the poor, not the government, but we are. We should be feeding them. I had brought uh, some friends of mine who needed help, and I asked the church if we could help them, the pastor. And he said because they weren't members, they couldn't. Well, it wasn't long that I left the church after that. Because we didn't help these people because they weren't members of the church. That is totally wrong. Totally wrong. Then another church I belong to, they said, well, we don't help them here. We help them, not the same people, I'm just talking about another time. We send them to the United Board of Missions because that's what we support. And we send them, send them over there, and that's where they clothe them. They give them food and, and clothes. And do you know out of the thousands and thousands of dollars they get a, a week, they sent $100 a month to the United Board of Missions. It's a wonder the Lord doesn't come down here and strike some of these churches. Out of all that money they get, they sent $100 a month to the United Board of Missions. So when someone comes in hungry or needs help, they send them over, they send them over there. People, that is wrong. That's why I'm making this tape so your eyes can be open, that the scriptures will open your eyes and see what Christianity is, not religion. We don't need religion. Religion doesn't work. We need Christianity in the world. We need people who will walk and talk Jesus. That's what we need. That is the church. And these are the things that go on in the church. You know, the disciples, they didn't have to beg for anything, like I said, when they went out and did the ministry of the Lord. The Lord su supplied their needs. In Matthew 21, verses 1 through 3, it speaks about Jesus sending two of his disciples into the city to get a, a donkey. And he said, in verse 3, he says, And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them. So the Lord is saying, just go. The disciples were like, well, what if they uh, question us? And the Lord just said, just tell them I need it. Because the Lord prepared the way. He prepares the way. If a man is called into the ministry, the Lord will prepare the way. And when the man gets there, it will be ready. In Luke chapter 9, verses 1, 1 through 3, Jesus sent his 12 disciples out and gave them power over the devils to cast out devils and to cure diseases and to preach the kingdom of God and he also told him he says when you go he said don't take anything with you don't take no food with you don't take no money with you you go and I'll prepare the way I will supply what you need and this and this is the way it's always been we do not have to beg for money and in these teachings a lot of time I a lot of times I repeat myself but there's nothing wrong with repetition for you to hear it over and over again because sometimes that's what it takes for us, for it to hit it, hit us and, and, and think, you know, that's right. So if you hear me say things over and over, it's, it's, it's good because I need to hear things over and over. But also at the same time, when you are sent out, you know, it might be like Jesus. Because in Luke chapter 9 verse 58, it says, And Jesus said unto him, Foxes have hoes, and birds have the air, or have nests. But the Son of Man hath not where to lay his head. You know, so if the Lord sends you on a ministry and sends you out, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be in a mansion or you're going to eat like a king. Because right here, Jesus Christ himself said he didn't even have a place to lay his head. So all I'm showing here 
is don't expect your ministry to be all fancy. Sometimes it will. Sometimes he'll give you what you need and, and what you want sometimes. But then sometimes he'll give you just exactly what you need, like John the Baptist. John the Baptist had no fancy living, that's for sure. But he was, but he was in the will of God. So don't think just because uh, you're not getting everything you'd like to have that maybe you're not in the will of God. No, because all you got to do is look at John the Baptist. He was in the will of God. He was a man of God. And look what he had. Just like some of these preachers, they preach that we, if, if we don't have everything that we want, fancy cars, fancy homes, then we're doing something wrong. No, they're doing something wrong by preaching things that are not true, things that are not in the Bible. And they should fear the Lord for that. Let's talk about gifts. This is one that's that's uh, that's a touchy one also because some of the churches don't accept the gifts that uh, that were in that that are biblical to have because some of the gifts they said was just for back then. But let's see what the Bible says in Ephesians four eight. It says that He gave gifts to unto men. Anybody who is a born again believer, He gives gifts to them. Ephesians 4.11, he says, and he gave some, speaking of gifts, he gave some apostles, he gave some prophets, he gave some evangelists, and he gave some pastors and teachers. These are different gifts. And they have other gifts, like speaking in tongues, the gift of healing. But the question is, how long are these gifts with us? And like I said, some, some denominations say they've, they've passed, that they're no longer for today. Ephesians 4.13, speaking of the gifts. They will be with us until, verse 13, chapter 4, till we all come in the uni unity of the faith and of the uh, knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of statu statue of the fullness of Christ. Let me read that in the, in the Living Bible. It says, until finally we all, we all believe alike, about our salvation and about our Savior, God's Son, and all become full grown in the Lord. Yes, to the point of being filled, 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 full of the Christ. There's such a thing as being filled with the Spirit, moving in the Spirit. But anyway, the Lord says here, until all this happens, the gifts are with us until then. And I sure don't see us being all united. And having the same belief, Catholics believe that you have to be baptized as a baby, and they have to, and they believe that you uh, go to purgatory when you die, even if you're if you die in the grace. The Pentecostals believe that you have to speak in tongues in order to make it to heaven. The Baptists believe in eternal security. Now, Pentecostals don't believe that. Baptists don't believe what the Pentecostals believe. You know, we pretty much. Uh, I'm just going to grab a number here. The Baptists and the Pentecostals, they, they probably believe about 90% of the Bible they agree on. It's only about 10% of the Bible they have disagreements. But, you know, when we get together, the only thing we talk about is that 10% that we disagree on. For some reason, we ignore the 90% that we can fellowship on and agree on, but instead we'd rather get together and argue. But anyway, the gifts are here until we unite as one, become one church. And from, from what I read in the Bible, that's not going to happen until the rapture comes. Until the rapture comes. So those who say that the gifts and certain scriptures in the Bible were just for back then, you know, if that was the case, then we would need another Bible to show, okay, now in this Bible, this is for today. That Bible was just for yesterday. This Bible is for today for today but the Lord didn't do that he gave us an Old Testament and a New Testament but that doesn't mean there's two Bibles it just shows this was the Old Covenant and this is a New Covenant the way it was before Jesus sacrificed his blood and the way it is after he sacrificed the blood but it doesn't mean there's two Bibles it doesn't mean that the Old Testament was just for back then and the New Testament is for today because the New Testament doesn't begin with Matthew chapter 1, verse 1. The New Testament begins when Jesus resurrected. Because up until then, we were still under animal sacrifices. And that's Old Testament. 
So everything that John the Baptist and and, and the and the the prophets before then in the New Testament, whatever they said, then we're not supposed to believe it because that's Old Testament. The New Testament speaks of the blood covenant we have with the Lord now, since Jesus gave up His blood. The Old Testament was the animal sacrifices that they use for blood sacrifice that we can get forgiveness. It's not that way no more. Jesus was the final sacrifice, and I'll get more into that. The Lord said, He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. There are not verses in the Bible, scriptures in the Bible, that were just for back then. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7. So that ye come behind in no gifts, waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. What does he say here? So that we will have the gifts until Jesus comes. I'm reading the scriptures here. People who believe that some scriptures were for just back then, I guess they didn't read this one. We're supposed to have them until Jesus comes. And he hasn't come yet. The Lord said in Malachi, I am the Lord thy God. I change not. So I believe everything in the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, and everything I read in there, I read that is for now. Now there are uh, places in the Bible where it talks about the tribulation. It talks about what's going to happen then. Now it talks about things that are going to happen in the future. So they're not right now, but they're they're coming. And then it talks about stuff that happened in the Old Testament and ta things that happened back then. Like another one, John 14:12. It says, verily, verily. When, you, when you're reading the Bible and it says, verily, verily, the Lord is saying, listen, listen. That's what verily, verily means. He says, listen. And the Lord said, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. So these miracles, all these gifts that the Lord worked under, these miracles that he was doing, he said we would do even greater ones. So why are we saying that these gifts are no, are not for today? When the Lord says right here, he says, greater, greater works are you going to do. We need to read the Bible. We need to read these verses. When we read the Bible, we got to quit reading the Bible like a book where you just read through it. That's not the way you read the Bible. When you read the Bible, you read it verse by verse and meditate on it. Because if you read it just like a book, just a, just going through a book, well, you, you're you going to miss a lot of stuff. You're going to miss a lot. Reading the Bible is not just like reading just a regular book. Reading the Bible is, is something that you study, that you meditate on, and that you pray and ask the Lord to reveal whatever it is He wants you to see at that time. That's how you read the Bible. In Hebrews 2, 4, and this is way after the resurrection. This is New Testament for sure. It said, God always has shown us that these messages are true by signs and wonders and various miracles and by giving certain special abilities from the Holy Spirit to those who believe. Yes, God has assigned such gifts to each of us. Now, this is out of the Living Bible. I read it out of the Living Bible because it's easier to understand. But right here in Hebrews, I mean, it plainly says it that the miracles are still here, that the gifts are still here. Now, there are denominations out there. There are men out there who are misusing it. They are going around laying hands on sick and saying they're healed when they're not really healed. You've got to be led by the Lord to use these gifts. These men who go out there and lay hands and, and knock people over, slay them in the spirit is what they call it. That's, that's, I'm sorry, people, that's not real. The Lord does not operate that way. If he wants to heal somebody, like I said earlier, he'll give someone the word and say, go lay hands on this person because I'm going to heal them. And he doesn't make it into a show. He probably is going to do it in private, at home. Now, he might do it in the church, but the way they do it now in some of these churches, that's just, that's entertainment. And also, that's deceiving. It's deceiving the people. Because some of those people, and I know one personally, said she was healed from her uh, diabetes. So she quit taking her medicine, and when she did, you know, she started to eat like, okay, she didn't have it anymore because they told her she was healed from it. Well, uh, she almost lost her eyesight for one thing, and it could have killed her. People, there's a lot of entertainment out there 
at these churches. And that's all it is, is entertainment. It's not the work of the Lord. The Lord will tell a man when to go lay hands on someone. And he doesn't, not, he doesn't make it into an entertainment thing. That's why I tell my wife and I tell any other Christian, do not watch the Christian station on TV, CBN or TVN, whatever that is. I say do not watch it. There's some good on there, some, but there's also a lot of bad on there. There's a lot of wolves on that station. And later on, I'll get on to the wolves. But for right now, I'm just showing that the gifts are for now. The gifts are now. We do have miracles. Not the way they're doing them on TV, but we do have miracles. The Lord does use a Christian man to go lay hands on someone to heal them or to cast out a devil. Miracles are for today. The gifts, and like I said, we have to do it through the word of the Lord. In John chapter 8, verse 28, it says, Then Jesus, then said Jesus unto them, When ye have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father has taught me, the Lord himself, Jesus Christ, is saying, I don't do any of this under me. He does it under the power of his Father, the Lord. So we would know that it's from him. He's saying it's not me, it's, it's my Father who gives me this power. So men who think they got the power of healing and they can just go around laying their hands on whoever, that is wrong. They, the Lord doesn't give them this power and say, okay, go do what you want with it. No. These men, if they have the gift of healing, they have to wait till the Lord gives them a word to go lay hands on someone to heal them. This is biblical. This is the word of God. And there's so much teachings I can do here. But right now, I'm just showing what is the church. The do's and the don'ts. Now, for some reason, in the Baptist church, they, they, they kept the gifts of the, of the pastor and teacher and the evangelist. But for some reason, they didn't keep the gifts of being an apostle or, an, or a prophet or other gifts as healing and speaking in tongues. Let me just say something about speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues is a gift from God. You don't need it to be saved. Tongues did not die on the cross for you. Jesus did. But tongues is a gift from the Lord. And the Bible plainly says how to use it. It says, in the church, a man will stand up. And the Lord will give him the gift of tongues. And this person will speak in tongues. And nobody will understand what he's saying. But then this person sits down whenever he's finished. And then he gives another man the interpretation of tongues. This man gets up and says to the church what the Lord had spoke to us through tongues. And that's the way the Bible speaks about using tongues. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that everybody's supposed to speak in tongues at the same, everybody's just blabbering away, nobody understanding anything. That's not the way the Lord meant for us to use it. The Bible plainly says how to use the gift of tongues. And let me say this also. I've, I've been around. I've been in a lot of churches. And I think that the Lord sent me there for me to grow and to see what's being done. So I can say firsthand, I have been in a church where I wanted the gift of tongues. And I went up front and people laid hands on me and everybody was speaking in tongues. Well, I didn't get it. So the pastor and the deacon took me to his office and they both laid hand on, hands on me and they were telling me to repeat a certain phrase over and over and over and then to say it faster and faster. And I knew what they were doing. After a little while, you know, you just, you just start mumbling your words. I stopped them and I said, listen to me. Tongues is a gift from God. It's not something that is taught here. It's not something you teach. It's a gift from God. If the Lord wants me to speak in tongues, he'll give me this gift. It's not going to come from a man teaching me how to do it. Now, if they did that with me, I can imagine how many people they've done that with. And now these people think they're speaking in tongues. There's a lot of people out there who are not speaking in tongues. They're blabbering, but they're not speaking in tongues. And you're, you're probably thinking, man, this guy is really laying it on. Uh, yes, I am. I am, because, you know, I'm getting tired of seeing these things happen, people being deceived. And this is, I, I'm glad the Lord has used me to make this tape. I'm glad. I mean, I don't, I don't know why, me, because, I, I mean, I'm just dirt also. But the Lord is using me 
to, to make this tape. Because if it wasn't for the Lord, I wouldn't be making this tape. Believe me. The Lord has led me to make this tape, so I'm making it. And I'm sure those people who are hungry for the Word of God will listen to this tape. But those who are religious and, and get offended, they'll probably, they probably have already turned it off. But watch, watch out. There are churches out there who are teaching things that are false, that is not from the Lord. An apostle, an apostle, the gift of an apostle, he's just a man, a messenger from God. God tells him something and he delivers it to us. And a prophet, a prophet is, is a man that speaks for God to the people in, in a supernatural way. Meaning he doesn't even know what he's, he's going to say. The Lord, just like I said just now, like in speaking in tongues. He just starts speaking. The Lord gives him the words to say. Like sometimes when I'm preaching, I got to listen to the tape because I don't even know what I've said. I got to listen to the tape to see what I've heard, what I've said. That's when I know that the Lord has taken over my tongue. When I can finish a sermon, what did I say? And I have to listen to the tape myself to hear the message. Now, I'm not saying I'm a, I'm a prophet. But when you're speaking through the Holy Spirit, that's what happens. You know, and one of the gifts of baptism, you don't have to be a, a, a pastor to baptize someone. You don't have, if someone is born again, if someone has given their life to the Lord and they want to get baptized, you have the power just to go out into the river or anywhere, dunk them, sprinkle them, it don't matter. But baptize them with water, you can do We have the power to do that. We do not have to have a, a degree in college or, or a title of pastor or, or letters behind our, our name to show that we're important enough or we're knowledgeable enough to baptize someone. We can baptize someone who wants to be baptized for the Lord. In Matthew 28, 19, it says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Is he talking just to preachers right here? Is he just telling the preachers to go forth? No, he's talking to the born-again Christian. Go ye therefore, speaking of us, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now, if you want to baptize them in the name of Jesus, that's fine. If you want to baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, that's fine. When my brother got born again, Pentecostals would tell him he had to be baptized just in the name of Jesus. But he had been taught that you had to be baptized as Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And he asked me, he says, which one's right? I told him, they're both right. These churches make a big deal out of it. It's not no big deal. You get baptized, you get baptized in the name of Jesus or Father, Son, Holy Ghost. It doesn't matter. But sometimes we take things and we make big deal out of them when they're not really a big deal. Like I said before, Jesus didn't do these miracles by being God. He did them by being a man following God's will through the Holy Spirit to show us we also can do things by being. Remember, Jesus was 100% man. And he, is, he got baptized. John, John said that uh, he needed to be baptized of him. And Jesus said, I, you need to baptize me so I can be an example to those who believe that they need to do this. Baptism doesn't save you, okay? The water didn't die on the cross for you. Jesus did. But the Lord did say we need to be baptized. And it's something we ought to, you know, if we're going to follow the Lord and obey him, then that's something we ought to do. But if you don't get baptized, not being baptized, that doesn't send you to hell. You know, we should be obedient and we should get baptized. But don't think just because you don't that you're going to hell. Because you're not. There is only one sin that sends you to hell. Only one. And that's rejecting the Lord Jesus Christ, which the Bible calls blasphemy. That's the only sin that the Lord cannot forgive you, is rejecting him. You can kill somebody. You can lie still. You cannot get baptized. The Lord forgives all that. If you don't tithe, he forgives it. And, well, I say tithe. I, I'm not one to say that tithing is a, if you don't tithe, that's a sin. I'm not one to say that. The only thing if you know, on tithing, if, if you don't tithe, you're just robbing the Lord from blessing you. And that's what I teach because that's what the Bible says. But I'm not going to make you feel like you're sinning if you don't tithe. But anyway, I'm showing here that the Lord Jesus said he did everything through the Father. And he was just a man, perfect man. But we're supposed to be, we're supposed to be like Jesus. He was the light. 
and we're little light. In Matthew 12, 28, it says, But if I cast out devils by the, by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God is upon you. So how did he cast out devils? By the Spirit of God. Did he say through himself? He said, by the Spirit of God. You see, the Trinity, there's a lot of people who can't explain the Trinity. How can you, how can Jesus be God in heaven and Son of God, a man on earth at the same time? I don't know. I don't know. The Bible says that, though. The book of John, it says they're the same. So I believe it. Now, how he does it, I don't know. I'm not God. I don't know how he does that. My ways ain't his ways. The way I think ain't the way he thinks. But he, but it is. He was 100% God in heaven at the same time being 100% man on earth. He was God come in the flesh. That's what the word says. God come in the flesh. Okay? Now, Jesus was the son of God. Now, the Catholics, when they're praying the rosary and they say, uh, I don't know if I got this exactly right, but they say something like, Holy Mary, Mother of God. I'm sorry. She is not the Mother of God. She did not give birth to God. She gave birth to the Son of God. She gave birth to Jesus, the Son of God. Okay, so she is not the Mother of God. She's the Mother of Jesus. If she was the Mother of God, then Mary would be God. Then why would we go to God when we have someone who is greater than God? And, well, so, some Catholics believe that. But I'll get, I'll get on that later. But Jesus did things in the spirit of God. That's what it says right here. So we do have gifts. We do have gifts. And they are for today. Okay? Read the word of God. Don't let some denomination tell you, no, that's not, or yes, that is. Read the word of God for yourself. I mean, these tapes right here, they're free. I don't sell my tapes. This is the word of God. I'm not going to sell the word of God. Like I said before, the Lord has supplied me what I needed to get this ministry going. I did not have to ask for money, and I'm not going to ask for money. This is a tape ministry that the Lord has led me to do, and I'm not going to ask for money. I'm not going to ask for money over these tapes. I'm not going to ask for no gifts. This is of the Lord, and when it's of the Lord, it's free. Now, in the church, there is one of each of these, there is gifts in the church, uh, administration gifts. But when you go into the world, upon where the lost people you have all these gifts god will tell you which one he needs you to use for what for whatever situation he puts you in so in the church we don't need everyone to be the foot or everyone to be the hand like it says in first corinthians chapter 12 that's in the church but out in the world if he needs you to use this gift gives you a word to do whatever then that's that's what you use that's the ministry of the lord if, if, if you're in a situation and someone needs needs to be healed, well, the Lord is not going to say, well, I can't do it because my healer is on the other end of town. No, he'll use you. If you're a born-again believer, you have the gifts in you. He gives you a special gift that you're special in. But if he needs a healer to heal a person right then and there, he's not going to say, well, you got to wait and, uh, until so-and-so comes so he can lay hands on you. No, you have the power. If he gives you the word, to put your hands on this person so he can heal them. You heal them through the Lord. It doesn't mean you have the gift of healing. It does mean that you had it just then and there. And you might not ever get it again. But what I'm trying to show here, when we're out in the world, whatever gift the Lord wants to use, to use us with, that's what we do. Now in the church, not everybody's healing. Okay, Not everybody has the same gifts. Because like I said, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, there's different gifts, and they're used in different ways for the church. But when we're out in the world, and the Lord needs to use us for whatever, whatever gifts he wants to put in us at that time, then that's what we do. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 8. All the special gifts and power from God will someday come to an end. In verse 10, it says, But when we have been made perfect and complete, that's when these gifts win. Earlier I said, I gave you get, uh, verses to show when do these gifts end. Here are some more. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 8 through 12, and it'll tell you. It will tell you. In verse 12 it says, and I'm reading this out of the Living Bible. It says, but someday we're going to see him in his completeness, face to face. 
Now all that I know is hazy and blurred. But then when I see everything clearly, just as clearly as God sees into my heart right now, that is when we'll be made perfect and complete. So until then, we have the gifts. Until we are made perfect and complete, and that's going to happen, like I said before, when the rapture comes, when the Lord comes and gets us. That's when we'll, we will unite and become one. So please read the scriptures so you can see that the gifts are for the hour. I'm really talking about gifts because there are churches out there, people who are saying, well, those, were just, those gifts were just for back then. Read the Bible. Read the Word of God so you can see that the gifts are for now. You know, to be a preacher or a teacher, the Bible doesn't say, come out and say that you have to be like 30 years old. If you read the Word, the Bible doesn't, doesn't give the age 30. But it shows that Jesus, when he started his ministry, he was in his 30s. John the Baptist, he didn't start his ministry until he was in his 30s. Ezekiel didn't get in, didn't get uh, his big revelation until he was in his 30s. And all the Levites who were priests or, and Bible teachers, they didn't start until they were in their 30s. If you got the gift of being a preacher, you're not a baby Christian. Because where it, uh, where it gives the qualification for being a preacher, it says a preacher is not a young person. Is not a young person. We got some pretty young preachers out there. I don't believe they were called of the Lord to preach. I believe they took it up on their own to be preachers. And the Lord says it's a good thing to want to preach. It's a good thing. But wait till you're qualified. You got to go through life and live life and see it through your spiritual eyes and go through tribulations to understand what the Word of God says. So the gift of being a preacher. I think a preacher should be someone who is well in age as far as being a Christian. I believe that's when when I was preaching in the Baptist church and the preacher wanted me to, to go to college and stuff to become a preacher. And I prayed about it and I asked the Lord, the Lord, you know, what should I do? Because at that time, like I said, I didn't know about preachers that, uh, shouldn't be young and stuff. I didn't know that, but I didn't know how to pray. The Lord showed me, no, this is not what I want you to do. But I believe a man should be in his 30s before he even starts preaching the Word of God. And I'm not talking about he should, if it's a man who's been, uh, got born again when he's 25 years old. No, I'm talking Jesus, John, the Levites, Ezekiel. They all lived a Christian life from their young age. So they lived a Christian life for 30 years before they even started their ministry. So I'm not talking about someone who gets born again at 20, 25 years old, and then they can start preaching at 30. I'm talking about someone who's lived a long time as a Christian. That qualifies him to be a preacher, and plus other things.